Thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to Broadland District Council's Planning Committee on 6 of October 2021. This meeting is being held in person and is being live streamed. A very warm welcome to everyone joining us via the live stream webcast. My name is Karen, Councillor Karen Vincent, I'm Vice Chairman of this Planning Committee and in the absence of our committee chairman today I shall be presiding at today's meeting. On the top table today, I'm joined by Tracy Lincoln, Development Manager for Broadland and South Norfolk Councils, Glenn Beaumont, Area Planning Manager, Charles Judson, Principal Planning Manager, and last but certainly by no means least, Dawn Matthews, our Committee Officer, who will be taking and preparing the minutes and keeping me in order. So thank you in advance for that. Leah Arthurton will be managing our live stream for us, so thank you to all of our officers here today. Before we proceed with the agenda, there are just a few items of housekeeping for me to run through. First of all, I just need to read out the fire notice. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not expecting a fire drill today, so if the fire alarm sounds, we will need to evacuate the building. There are two exits for this room. One is through the do double doors where you came in this morning, and the other door is to the right of the stage, to my left, to your right, which leads to the external fire escape. Please note that depending on the location of the fire, the use of the lift may be prohibited. And however, we do have an evac chair and trained staff to assist people with mobility issues. In the event of an evacuation, we need to meet to the left of the driveway at the main entrance to Thorpe Lodge. Thank you very much. A couple of other items just to run through. Filming, um, members of the public are welcome to film proceedings as long as they're not disruptive to the con conduct of the meeting today. If anyone wishes to film or record this meeting, please can you indicate now? Nope, thank you very much. And um, Members, please can I all ask you all to ensure that your mobile phones and electronic devices are switched to silent. If you do need to use your mobile phone whilst the committee is in session, please would you mind leaving the room to do so? However, you will need to appreciate this could result in you not being able to vote on the matter under discussion at the point that you leave the room. Public speaking. Members of the public can only speak if prior arrangements have been made in accordance with the council scheme of public speaking. Therefore, only those who have registered to speak will be able to address the committee today. The order of our meeting today will be as follows. The planning committee will present the, to the committee for their consideration, sorry, present the application to the committee for their consideration. This will be followed by questions to the planning officer from members of the committee in relation to the presentation itself. Public speakers will then be invited to present their case. The order of public speaking is parish, town council, followed by objectors and then supporters of the application, i.e. either the applicant or agent. The time allocated is a maximum of five minutes per speaker or per parish council, up to a maximum of 15 minutes per category. Public speaking will be followed by question to the speakers from the members of the committee. This is purely to clarify something that the speaker has said, but not to invite the speaker to put further points across. Following that, council members who are not members of the committee will then be invited to speak for the allocated time up to a maximum of five minutes each. This will be followed by questions from members of the committee. Again, these questions are only to clarify something that the speaker has said and not to invite the speaker to put any further points across. Then, of course, the committee will then discuss and determine the application. Finally, there will be no provision for members of the public to circulate documents for photographs, etc. at the meeting. It's my intention for us to take a short comfort break after the first application, in part to allow the presenting officers to change the technology. I hope that's okay with members. Are there any questions before we proceed? No, nope, thank you very much. Thank you. So without further delay, we will now move on to the agenda, agenda item one, to receive declarations of interest from members. Members, Councillor Beadle. Yeah, I schedule of applications number two. Um, I'm a resident of Haveringland, so I am entitled to attend uh, parish meetings, but I have not attended any which discuss this matter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Beadle. Any other declarations of interest? No? Thank you very much. That moves us on to item two, to report apologies for absence and substitute members. Uh, thank you, Dawn. Thank you, Chairman. I've received apologies from Councillors Moncur, Adams and Fisher, 
and councillors Kelly and Leggett on their substitutes. Thank you very much, Dawn, and thank you to councillors Kelly and Leggett for joining us today. That takes us on to item three to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 29th of July. I'm afraid I wasn't at that meeting. Could members indicate whether they're happy that I signed those as a true record of the meeting? Thank you very much. I will do that. Thank you. Item four, do we have any matters arising from those minutes? No, I'll take that as a no. Thank you. So that now moves us swiftly on to item five, and that's the plan and applications. We have three applications before us today, and I'll be taking them in the order set out on the agenda. So we will commence with application 2017-2208, and that's land adjacent to Mahoney Green, Ratcliffe, and that starts on page 13 of our agenda papers. This will be presented by Principal Plan and Officer Charles Judson. So if I may invite Charles to present this, please. Thank you, Chairman, and good morning, members. A planning application 2017-2208 seeks outline consent with all matters reserved except for access for a development of up to 205 dwellings on land adjacent to Mahoney Green Industrial Estate Ratkeith. Also included within the application is the provision of 4.11 hectares of informal public open space on a parcel of land to the, broad, uh, to the west of the Broadland Northway, which would be provided above and beyond the policy requirements for open space. The application has previously been reported to Planning Committee in October 2018, where it resolved, resolved to approve the application subject to conditions and a Section 106 agreement. Uh, the original committee report is in um, Appendix 1 on page 24 of your agenda. Since the application was reported to committee, there have been material changes in the housing land supply, the Greater Norwich Local Plan has been submitted to the Secretary of State for examination and there have been changes to the planning history of the adjacent industrial site. Uh, industrial site. These issues are covered in the officer's report on pages 18 to 23 of the agenda. Now, due to their age, ecological surveys have been updated and resubmitted and are currently with the Natural Environment team for comments. Um, the officer recommends that this is an outstanding issue. Um, but before we look at some of these key issues with the site, I'll briefly run through some slides so we can familiarise ourselves, uh, familiarise ourselves with the site and its surroundings. So turning first to the, um, the aerial, we can see the application site outlined in red. And you'll note that it's formed of two distinct and separate parcels of land, one to the east of the Broadland Northway. Uh, we've got my cursor up here. Um, this is the area for the proposed residential development uh, and an area to the west of the Broadland Northway over here, which is proposed for the public open space with ecological enhancements and um, landscape um, improvements. Just a few things to note on this slide. Um, you've got the, the, the main kind of built up settlement of, of Ratkeith down in the southeast corner here. To the west of that main built up area, you've got three fields. These are allocated and, and have um, permission for in the region of 550 dwellings, um, one of which is under construction, this one down here, uh, with this site due to commence very shortly, and then following on behind this site up here. And then as we move north, we've got the Mahoney Green Industrial Estate, which contains a variety of um, industrial uses and, and, and some offices, and um, there's a children's soft play centre there, so a, a number of different types of, of uses there. And just lost my cursor, and again, we move through the application site, we've got a cluster of residential dwellings and uh, moving further north, Ratkeith Industrial Estate. And then the majority of this land out to the east is allocated in the Growth Triangle Area Action Plan as GT16 for a uh, major urban expansion of um, in the region of 4,000 odd dwellings, employment uses and associated infrastructure. We've then got the Broadland Northway, which dissects the site running north-south. Um, you can't see it very well on this plan, but where my cursor is, you've got a um, Newman Road overbridge. And in this area here, it's an area of land which has been designated for ecological mitigation as part of the Broadland Northway works. So there's some um, ponds there for reptiles and, and bat boxes and, and, and bat houses um, and such like. And just lost my cursor again. There it is. Um, and then slightly further to the west, you've got Rackheath Hall, which is a grade two listed building. And then it's surrounding parkland and then the agricultural land associated with it. And then up the top here, we've, we've got Roxham Road. 
This was the site location plan submitted with the planning application. And we can see um, the, the Mahoney Green industrial estate in, in, in this location. This is the point of access into that industrial estate and a road heads south and then the road heads west where it also um, opens up into to this area here, which is the area of the industrial estate, which is subject to the revised planning application. To the north of the site, you can see Trinity Close um, and, and the, the, the dwellings which back onto the site. We've got GT16 over here and, and Green Lane West bounding the, the, the east of the site. What you can't see on this plan very well is the Broad and Northway, but that runs north-south. And then we've got Newman Road Bridge in this location here. And then the area for the uh, proposed open space and, and, and ecological and landscape enhancements. And then this slide just picks up some of that detail. Um, so again, you can note that the relationship with, with Trinity Close, Green Lane West. There's um, various landscaping to the, 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 the eastern boundaries and the southern boundaries here and with the industrial estate. Um, not of, of, of particularly high quality category C trees and, 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 um, and hedgerows. Um, along the Green Lane West frontage, there are category B and category C trees and, and hedgerows. Um, most important tree within the site is, is this one over here. That's a category A oak, which is a vetrum. And then on the other side of the, uh, the, the broad and north way, you've got this woodland um, and, and um, kind of bramble and, and bracken um, open space. But again, we can pick up the um, industrial estate. This is the area where the, um, the, 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 the amended application came in just to the south here. We've got that Newman Road overbridge. And you may be able to pick up this route here, which is a bridle way which runs along the western end of the, um, the, 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 the Broadland Northway and would ultimately provide access to, um, to, to, to the open space. Uh, before we look at the, the proposals in, in, in some detail, we'll just have a look at some policy which is relevant to the site. So you'll recall that I talked about these fields to the um, west of the main Brackheath area. These are GT18 and GT19. This slide's taken from the um, Growth Triangle Area Action Plan. So these are existing allocations and, and extend the, the built-up limits of, of Rackheath towards the Broadland Northway. Application site is in this area over here and GT16 off to the east. What you will note is this green dotted line that denotes a, pri a primary green infrastructure corridor under policy GT2 of the Growth Triangle Area Action Plan. The purpose of that corridor is to provide um, a landscape level habitat connectivity across the Growth Triangle, um, principally for, for, for bats, but also for ecology and for people and um, to, to really try and deliver um, those, those green infrastructure corridors through the, through the landscape. Also of relevance is the Greater Norwich Local Plan, and this slide is taken from that document. Um, I believe it's in your um, committee report as Appendix 2. And it just identifies the proposed allocation GNLP 0172, um, which reflects the, the, the proposed application um, and, and the, the allocation proposes residential development to the uh, east of the Broadland Northway and um, open space with ecological enhancements and, and landscape enhancements to the west of the, um, the, the, the Broadland Northway. And this slide is the policies uh, maps for the, the, the joint core strategy application site is down here and it just establishes that the site is outside of but adjacent to the settlement limits for Rackheath. Um, you've got a somewhat fragmented settlement limit in, in Rackheath. It covers the, um, the main industrial estate over to the, uh, the, the north here. It captures the, um, the, the residential dwellings to the north of the application site and then it picks up the boundary of the, um, the, the Mahoney Green industrial estate um, and, and the application site sits in this location and then obviously the land also to the west of the Broad and Northway in, in, in this location. So we are outside of but adjacent to the settlement limit. And turning to the proposals themselves, um, as we say, as we said, the, the application's in outline, seeking um, permission for up to 205 dwellings. Um, the only matter being considered is the principle of development and the means of access. Um, uh, that said, uh, an indicative master plan has been submitted in, in support of the application to identify how the development could be delivered. Um, but we must stress that this is indicative only at this stage. Um, what we must make note of, though, is the proposed means of access. 
that's onto Green Lane West on the eastern boundary of the site. Um, six metre wide estate road with two metre wide footpaths either side. Um, and, and that footpath would extend along the, the site frontage. And this blue arrow here denotes a proposed emergency access into the site. Um, that would be 3.7 metres wide um, and have a, a bollard with a, a lockable bollard that emergency services could, could unlock in the event of, of an emergency. Um, in terms of the, the kind of indicative strategy that, that, that the um, applicant is looking at, um, the access comes into the site. You've got this estate road which runs through the middle. Um, there's a valley within the site um, with high points on the northern boundary and southern boundary and the valley, the bottom of the valley kind of follows this, this line of the estate road. That estate road then heads south into the southern portion of the road and then off that estate road you've got various um, lower order roads, so shared surfaces, private drives. Um, you will note that there's a yellow line in this location. That yellow line denotes the proposed um, noise mitigation for the um, industrial estate. And over to the uh, west of the Broadland Northway, we've got the area of, of, of proposed public open space. And the yellow dashed line indicates the route of the um, existing bridleway. And what we can't see on there is, is, is the, the, uh, the, the Newman Road overbridge, which provides connectivity uh, into the site, uh, but also to, um, to, to, to the further afield in, in Ratkeith via, um, via Newman Road. Um, you may struggle to see this slide in any great detail, so apologies for that. Um, it's a result of the um, colours and the quite fine lines which have been used, but I did want to show you it as it's a matter of principle that we're seeking to establish. So this is the access plan which has been submitted with the application. Um, proposed access in, in at this point, as I said, six metres wide with, with two metre wide. Um, footpaths um, either side and then the proposed emergency access down at this point. Um, the proposed access would require the removal of one category B oak and one category B ash tree along the site's frontage. Um, the remainder of the trees um, are considered to be able to be retained. Um, and we'd also expect any um, any any subsequent reserve matters um, to propose landscaping to mitigate for the loss of those category B trees. And uh, just to run you through a few photos of the site, um, this is Green Lane West. We've got the category B oak in front of us here. You can see that there's a foot pre uh, footpath outside the front already. That would need to be widened to two metres to provide um, a, uh, an appropriate means of, of, of access um, and, and for, to, to serve a scale of the development proposed. Um, so you can see it's, it's, it's treed, hedged, and, 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 and a hole would need to be punched through here. Um, but the vast majority of those landscaping features have been demonstrated to, to be able to be retained. Off in the distance, you can see the rear of the dwellings on Trinity Close, which border the site to the north. And then over in the distance, we're just picking up Rackheath Park. And this is us then moving into the site, um, looking west, and we can pick up those properties on, on Trinity Close, backing onto the site. Rackheath Park off in the distance. Uh, the Broadland Northway is, is in a cutting um, along along this this line here, kind of on the, 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 the close horizon. And then we can see some of this landscaping which which bounds the um, the, 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 the industrial estate to the application site. Now what this slide slide doesn't show particularly well is is the valley which which is a key feature of the application site um, you may be able to know that it dips down here and, and then picks up again here uh, it's the, the the photo kind of flattens out a bit and, and it's a bit more significant than, than what's shown on this photo but the bottom of this valley runs broadly along this alignment here and then we're panning further south. So this is some of that landscaping surrounding the industrial estate um, and, and you're picking up Rackheath Park. And again, you may just be able to pick out that that valley side slopes up towards the, the, the industrial estate. And this is the boundary with Trinity Close. So those dwellings um, set at a higher level, 1.8, two meter high, close boarded fencing on the boundary with, with, with properties overlooking the, the application site. And this is views towards um, Mahoney Green Industrial Estate looking south. Um, so you've got this, this various scrubby landscaping on, on the site boundary, um, category C trees and, and, and some hedgerows and brambles and, and that kind of thing. And you can just make out the orange brick buildings of, of the industrial estate. 
And this photo is of that southern portion of the application site looking towards Newman Road. So you can pick out the Broadland Northway um, setting in, in its cutting. Um, we've got the, the, the minibus there, which helps us identify the, the location of that. The Newman Road Bridge. Um, this part of the application site is is broadly flat and level, um, and and um, um, they've got some some landscaping again, category C to the boundary with the the industrial estate. And this is the the view looking back towards where that photo was was taken. So you've got that um, screening to the industrial estate, and then the Broadland Northway, um, and the area of, of proposed open space and, and ecological mitigation. So I'll just return you to the indicative master plan while I run you through a few of the key issues with the site. Um, as we've said, the application's already been to planning committee in October 2018. At that time, there were three key issues that members needed to be mindful of in the determination of the application. These were whether the site was in a sustainable location. Secondly, whether there were material considerations to warrant a departure from the development plan. And thirdly, whether the development was acceptable on highways grounds, bearing in mind access was a principle seeking to be secured, and other planning considerations. Officers consider that these considerations remain highly relevant. However, further consideration now needs to be given to the change in housing land supply, the progress of the GNLP, and the planning history of the adjacent industrial units since the application was last reported to committee. Uh, these matters are covered in the officer's report on pages 14 to 23 of the agenda, so I don't intend to go over them in detail. However, to summarise, in terms of housing land supply, since the application was last reported to committee, there's been an increase in housing land supply such that the council is now able to demonstrate a five-year supply of land for housing. This would diminish the weight that will be given to housing as a benefit. However, it's also evident that when the application was previously considered by members, the weight given to housing was already diminished by virtue of the 2017 Strategic Housing Market Assessment, um, against which we could demonstrate an abundant supply of housing in the region of 8.8 .8 years. Consequently, the weight to give housing in the planning balance is not drastically different from when the application was previously considered. Uh, in terms of the progress of the Greater Norwich Local Plan, the site is proposed to be allocated in this plan for a residential development of up to 205 dwellings and land to be used for landscape and ecological enhancements with public access. As the GNLP has been submitted for examination, it does attract a limited degree of weight, which would increase as you go through the examination process. However, due to the unique circumstances of this application, which has already been to planning committee and resolved to be acceptable, it was considered suitable to bring this site forward for further consideration at this time. The proposed scheme is consistent with the proposed allocation, which is not subject to any unresolved objections, and is consistent with the proposed spatial strategy of the Greater Norwich Local Plan, with Rackheath retained as a location for significant growth. There are some aspects of the GNLP that the scheme would not comply with, but given the limited weight given to the GNLP, these conflicts would also not carry significant weight. And thirdly, in terms of the changes to the circumstances of the adjacent industrial estate, um, as I said, permission has now been granted for further development on that site and to ensure that these changes would not have an unacceptable impact on the residential immunity of future occupants of this site, um, a, uh, an amended acoustic assessment was um, submitted. That's been reviewed by the environmental health officer and they're satisfied that the, um, that the proposed scheme on the adjacent site wouldn't result in significant adverse impacts on the amenity of future residents, subject to the delivery of some um, mitigation in the form of an acoustic noise fence on, on the site boundary or on part of the site boundary with, with the industrial estate. So turning back to the three previous key issues, with the above issues in mind, we need to consider whether the site is in a sustainable location. Well, we've seen that it is outside of, but adjacent to the settlement limit for Ratkeith, and it's not allocated for development. So we are contrary to policy GC2 of the development plan. However, whilst it is outside of that settlement limit, Ratkeith does contain a broad range of services and facilities, and the site is considered to be well located relative to those, and also well located relative to planned growth in the area. Ratkeith is designated for significant growth in the current and future um, plans, and um, Ratkeith retains its, its position in the growth hierarchy. As detailed in the original committee report, there was concern regarding the capacity of local schools to accommodate 
committed development in the area. However, as was previously resolved, this does not amount to a grounds for refusal. Given the location of the site, provision of services and the position of Ratkeith in the growth hierarchy, officers are considered that the site is sustainable location for the scale of development proposed. The second issue previously considered was whether there were material considerations to justify a departure from the plan. Um, the scheme would provide 205 dwellings and 33% affordable housing. And whilst the housing supply situation has changed since the application was previously heard, the weight to give housing in the planning balance has not significantly changed given consideration of this smart schmar previously. And notwithstanding the housing supply position, the provision of housing is still regarded as a benefit and weighs in favour of the application. Furthermore, the provision of 33% affordable housing is a significant sorry, the provision of affordable housing is a significant benefit, and the provision of 33% affordable housing, which is 5% above the existing development plan policies, is require as a is, is considered to also have a modest benefit. Uh, in addition, the scheme delivers a significant area of public open space, which will be subject to landscape and ecological enhancements, helping to deliver the primary green infrastructure corridor that we saw on the previous slide. And this will be in accordance with policy GT2 of the Growth Triangle Area Action Plan. Uh, this would have social and environmental benefits, although it's citing in relation to the proposed scheme and the wider population of Ratkeith does diminish the benefits somewhat. We've seen from the slide that um, there's a, a slightly convoluted route to get to it um, over the Newman Road Bridge and, and then up along the Bridleway, so it's not directly connected to the existing settlement or the, uh, the, the, the proposed development. The scheme would also generate modest economic benefits through the construction phase and from locals local spending and these weigh in favour of the scheme. Objections from statutory consultees have been addressed through the application process or issues which are more appropriately dealt with at the reserve matters stage and there was only a limited response from residents during the initial consideration of the application. The parish council did raise a number of issues as detailed in appendix one of the officers report. Um, these have been addressed through the application process, for example, by amending the master plan to remove a pedestrian access to the industrial estate um, and the inclusion of an additional play area, or they've been addressed in the appraisal section of the officer's report. Uh, officers consider that there is some harm in allowing this development in that it would result in a change to the character and appearance of the application site and its surroundings by having an urbanising impact on the area and would result in the loss of the existing countryside. Uh, this is considered to result in some conflict with policy EN2 of the Development Management DPD and policy 1 of the JCS. However, it's the opinion of officers that the benefits of this scheme outweigh this harm sufficient for officers to recommend that planning permission should be granted subject to a section 106 agreement and subject to conditions and also subject to no objections being received from the natural environment team following consideration of the additional ecological surveys which have been submitted. Thank you Chair. Thank you very much Charles for your presentation. Uh, members do you have any questions for Charles please? Councillor Pratton. Thank you. Um, early on in your presentation, you mentioned um, a veteran oak. Uh, has that got any official prote uh, protection on it at the moment? It's not currently protected, no. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Beadle. Um, is it, is it uh, generally open? public open space and in other words public can wander across it or is it just a visual impact? Uh, that's the first one. Link to it is the uh, the adjoining open space which is allocated with the NDR. Uh, does that would it form a coherent body of land to, between the two? And the third one is is the redundant bungalow not far from the bridge will that, that ever becomes habited or is, indeed is it planned to be uh, retained? Uh, will that the access? Thank you, Councillor Beadle. Thank you for those questions. So in terms of the, the, the public open space to the west of the Broadland Northway, um, it would propose that it would be publicly accessible and, and the Section 106 agreement would secure um, that, 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 that that is the outcome. Um, in terms of its relationship with the, the adjoining land, um, 
there would need to be some controls put in place to try and limit the amount of people that are using that because it's outside of the application site and it's there for ecological enhancements. Um, it is a matter that we've discussed with the natural environment team and subject to the, um, the, the, the detailed open space scheme that would, would need to be submitted as part of the 106. They're satisfied that there's a, um, a, 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 the, the, those two open spaces can coexist together. And then in terms of the redundant bungalow, just from any members that, that, that may not be aware, um, there was a, a bungalow just down in this location here, just off the, uh, the, the plan. Um, I believe that was purchased by the county council and used as an office during the construction of the Broadland Northway. Oh, I think it um, might, be, uh, might be this one here. Um, and I do recall it was subsequently up for auction and, and um, we've subsequently granted planning permission to turn it back into a residential dwelling from, from offices, um, but that would have no impact on the, the, the ability or means to access the site. And um, there is the Broadland, uh, the, the bridal way to the, um, to, to the west of the Broadland Northway. And I'm also advised that the applicants um, or the, the current site owners, as part of the negotiations over the Broad and Northway, have secured a, uh, a means of access um, over the uh, over the land, which could be used for, for maintenance purposes in, in the future. So I'm satisfied that that bungalow um, doesn't present a difficulty to, to access the site. Thank you. Councillor Karimi Gouvalu. Thank you, Chair. Um, Charles, a couple of questions. Um, you say it's in a valley. Has there been any instance of flooding in that valley? And also, um, the open space is, not, is very nice, but doesn't seem to be much open space within the development itself. Where are children going to play? Is there a play area? And I don't think the access to that woodland space is very convenient for the residents. It seems to be quite a convoluted route to go to that, so I wouldn't say it's sort of open space for the development as such. Um, I'm not aware that there's been any previous flooding associated with, with the site. Um, the scheme was submit, um, submitted with the scheme was a, a flood risk assessment um, and an indicative drainage strategy. Um, there have been negotiations between the Lead Local Flood Authority and Anglian Water and it's been resolved that um, a suitable drainage scheme can be designed that would require um, a connection into Anglian Water um, with a controlled rate of discharge into their um, into their infrastructure. So water will be held on site using these two ponds that we can see, uh, and then um, and then then discharged into the Anglian Water surface water drainage system. Um, in terms of the open space within the development. Um, there are pockets of open space, so we're, we're showing a leap up in this location, we're showing a lap down in, in this location, um, and they are showing some, some routes around the, the, the peripheries of it. Um, we bus, must bear in mind that this scheme is indicative only, um, and we would look, be looking to secure either um, open space provided on-site or a commuted sum for off-site provision um, to, to enable enhancements to open space um, within the, the East Broadland Green Infrastructure Strategy. So what can't be provided on site can be made up for by a commuted sum. So what the scheme delivers is either on-site provision, on top of that a commuted sum towards off-site provision if they can't meet it on-site when we consider the detailed layout, and then on top of those requirements, they're providing the, the open space to the west of the Broadland Northway as um, kind of additional benefits to, to the scheme as, as such. Um, and you're absolutely right about the, 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 the route to that. Um, it's convoluted, it's detached from, from the scheme, um, and, and that's the reason why officers give it limited weight in, in the planning balance as per the, the original committee report um, because it is not directly related to, to the application site. Um, it still helps deliver the GT2 corridor, so we'll be securing ecological and landscape enhancements to that um, and then topped off with, with public access. It is a benefit. Um, I might just run you back to the aerial of the site. Um, not particularly clear on here, but what you might be able to make out are some routes. And I am aware that the, the public do currently take their dogs for walks uh, along this, and, and what this would do is would formalize that, um, make it legitimate, because currently they'll be accessing private land. Um, so um, it, it's currently seen as attractive to local residents because they're, they're using it. 
and it just formalizes that and, and, and legitimizes it. I just, I just like to make a point. I would like to see more open space within the actual development itself. That's absolutely something we can consider yeah. at Reserve Matters, yeah. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Um, Councillor Leggett, I believe mm. you had a question, okay. followed by Councillor Kelly. Mm -hmm. One yes, to the site where the red arrow is, 205 houses, 400 cars. Are you happy? It's a very restriction there, I think. Um, my other question is, uh, there, there's one access to the public site on the, uh, on the west, is over the, the bridge there, is it? Is there any other access from around it to look as if there is on the, on the, on the boundary? Um, and are you happy that from those, the developed area, 205 houses, there's the one bridge over the Norway? It just seems a bit under pressure, but presumably you have looked at that carefully. But I'd be glad of your comments on that. <laughs> oh. Um, so in terms of the, the single point of, of access into the site, um, it's something that, that we had a good debate with highways about as part of the, the, the consideration of the application um, because it is a development of a scale where highways would typically request two points of access and that's to make sure that um, it's, it's, it's kind of robust and, and in the event of any emergencies, there's, there's always a, a, a second way of getting into the site. Um, and those were the initial comments that, that the Highway Authority made. Um, one of the issues that we face with this site is, is that there's a relatively narrow frontage onto Green Lane West, not a huge amount of distance in which to put two access points. If we were to put two access points, it would result in the loss of more trees and the existing landscape features. It would also result in a more urban appearance because this is a six metre wide junction with two metre wide footpaths either side and, and, and having two of those creates a more engineered and, and, and um, urban in, environment. We also got to consider that there's an existing access into the Mahoney Green industrial estate at this point. So what conflicts would a secondary point of, of, of primary access into the site have with that? There's another access into Trinity close up at this point. And as part of GT16 master planning, it's also proposed to have a means of access on the east side of, of Green Lane West. Um, so from an officer perspective, we thought that there may be issues with, with having two primary accesses. And what the applicants undertook was a piece of work to demonstrate that in capacity and safety terms, there would be no highway safety issue with having a single point of primary access, which is the red arrow here, served with a, a supplementary emergency point of, of access. Um, and based on that additional piece of work that was submitted, um, the Highway Authority couldn't substantiate an objection on, on highway safety grounds um, and, and, and therefore was satisfied that a single point of access would, would be acceptable. Um, in terms of the access arrangements to the, the, the public open space, um, I can pull up the aerial photography. Um, so the, the closest point of access is via Newman Road Bridge and then along the bridleway. You're absolutely correct. Um, but that bridleway continues north along this direction. So anybody heading from along the, the existing bridleway uh, could, could pick up access to the site from this direction. And that bridleway also runs from, from the roundabout down in this location. There are pedestrian and cycle footpaths going in as part of this development to connect up with the broad and north way. So residents will be able to use the uh, the, the, the crossing points on, on, on the roundabout, pick up the uh, the, 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 um, the bridleway and access it from, from this direction. So those, what's labelled New Rackheath here, residents could use the, the future footpath cycleways which are coming in here and then access it along along in, in, in this direction. Um, we wouldn't be expecting people to drive to the site, 
would be walking and cycling. Um, there wouldn't be provision for car parking. Um, so there wouldn't be additional traffic using Newman Road Bridge. So we don't have to consider the um, the, um, the kind of highways implications of, 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 of that. Thank you, Chairman. But my word, I think safety is an aspect there which concerns me. But you say the highways have looked at that. You, you just pointed, oh, well, these people can go across the highway to walk up there. But, you know, that's a fairly dangerous crossing to just say, oh, well, you've crossed the Broadway. But thank you, Chairman. I've raised my concern. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Leggett. Councillor Kelly, I believe you wanted to speak. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good morning, Charles. Uh, further on from Caroline's com uh, comments about uh, drainage within the Valley Dip there, um, I gather that the Lead um, Water Authority said the mitigation for the flooding, et cetera, is adequate. Um, 25 litres per minute under the, the, the light of what presently we see in London and other places, of where there's enormous flash floods with the light of climate change i mean can they sufficiently mitigate the risk for this without really looking at what it'll be like in 10 years time which is probably what the development is personally and i'm on the drainage boards i think it's totally inadequate for what we you're, you're proposing at the present moment so i'd like your comments on that please certainly um the, the lead local flood authority required drainage schemes to take account of climate change and that they build in a 40 percent allowance for, for climate change so the um the drainage features that we see on on the indicative scheme those basins would be large enough to hold enough water to accommodate current rainfall and looking forward with that 40 percent allowance um, that would hold the water on site and then be released at that 25 um, litres per, per second rate that Anglian Water have, have said would, would be acceptable. Um, so based on the, the, the LLFA response and, and the, um, the Anglian Water response, um, we're satisfied that a, a, a drainage strategy can be, can be achieved. Okay. Charles, I wonder if I could just pick up at that point, just um, on the point about flooding and drainage, just referring to 3.12 on page 28, the Norwich Air International Airport's concerns um, and they're raising some concerns, not least about uh, lighting, but also about drainage. I don't know if you could expand on that at all, please. Yeah, so the um, the, the airport have concerns about open water features um, and them attracting birds um, because that then presents a, a flight risk for, for aviation safety. Um, and what we would be expecting to see with the reserve matters application is a, um, a, a bird hazard assessment, um, which we've seen on, on a few applications now in, in the growth triangle. Um, and, and what the applicants do is, is produce an assessment to understand um, how long water would be held on site, um, and, and whether birds are likely to be attracted to that, whether any mitigation needs to be put in place. So um, be satisfied that, that subject to that, that bird strike hazard assessment being submitted, then um, we can work with the um, airport to, to overcome any issues. Thank you very much, Charles. Are there any other questions from members? I've just got a couple, if I may, at this point. Um, I'd shared the concerns of Councillor Karimi Gouvenu about the on-site open space requirements. I know that that's been discussed. Um, also around flooding, which we've also picked up. Um, two other things. One was around um, the representations made by the parish council and the neighbouring properties. Um, I heard, Charles, that you said that some of those had been addressed as part of this application process, but I just wondered if you could expand on that. Will there be further conditions being added to this application at the reserve matters stage, please? Certainly. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to briefly go through those um, those Ratcliffe Parish Council comments. They are on page 30 of the agenda, if, if members did want to refer to those. Um, in terms of, uh, they've, they've raised comments in terms of the design of the emergency access, um, Highways Authority are satisfied that a 3.7 metre wide emergency access will be acceptable. Um, how that then relates to the layout of the development will be subject to reserve matters. 
Um, they're suggesting that at least two points of access should be provided. Um, in this case, they are, albeit one primary point and, and, and one emergency access. And we've heard that the highway authority are satisfied with that based on the additional information that the applicant submitted. Um, they're suggesting that a pedestrian cycle link to Mahoney Green is not suitable. Um, originally proposed within the application was a, uh, a pedestrian cycle link from the proposed development into the Mahoney Green industrial estate. Uh, the master plan was amended to omit that proposed link, so that, that issue has been resolved. Um, says the footpath to the front of the site needs to be increased to a more appropriate width. Heading needs to be maintained to ensure visibility. Um, proposed now with the scheme is a two metre wide footpath, which is considered to be sufficient for a development of this scale. Um, we've seen that um, a majority of the existing landscaping head and hedging can be retained along that, that frontage. Um, they're suggesting that the traffic assessment does not align with local experience, but haven't gone on to any greater detail ab about that. Um, obviously, we have taken the advice of, of the Highway Authority. They will have scrutinised that, that transport assessment and it will have been conducted um, in accordance with the, 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 the industry best practice. Um, and I've no reason to doubt why that transport assessment wouldn't be robust. Um, and, and, and the development incorporating the mitigation which is necessary to, to make the, the development acceptable. Um, the distance to public transport connections is not considered to be accurate. I think that's uh, an error in the, um, the, the transport assessment. Highways Authority will have looked at um, what the existing transport, public transport arrangements to the site are um, and I don't consider that to be a, a grounds for, for, for refusal. Um, the site and adjacent industrial estate is liable to flooding. Um, well, we've discussed this previously and, and um, following some, some reasonable negotiations and discussions with the LFA and Anglian Water, both are satisfied that uh, a scheme can be addressed and there's a condition on the, um, the, the, the proposed recommendation that would require a detailed surface water drainage scheme to be submitted. Uh, the provision of heathland to the west of the site is appreciated, but access is inadequate. Um, you will recall that officers limit the weight that they give to that open space because we agree that it's detached and, and, and far from the, um, the, the, the proposed site. So um, the officer's recommendation reflects that it's, it's, it's not that there, there, there are some, some, some issues there. Um, we would expect better on-site play provision to be provided to the south of the site and off-site contributions for improvements elsewhere in the village. Um, the, man, the, the master plan was, was amended to um, introduce a secondary play space to the southern portion of the site. Um, and as discussed previously, when considered at, at, at the reserve matters stage, when we've got a detailed design in front of us, any on-site shortfall can be made up by way of, of, of off-site contribution. Uh, the inclusion of SUDS features as open space would limit their use. Um, I would agree that it limits the amount of recreational space which, which is provided, but it's not to say that SUDS can't be included as informal open space because they can have a multifunctional purpose and you can have roots around them, they can be planted up, they can serve ecological benefits. So um, my view is, is that just having SUDS in a scheme doesn't render the areas as, as, as kind of null and void for, 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 for informal recreational purposes. Uh, it suggests a detailed noise assessment will be required. One was submitted with the application that was updated to reflect the changes to the planning history of the adjacent industrial estate. And there's also a condition requiring an amended noise assessment to be submitted when we've got details of the detailed layout and that noise assessment is to be submitted concurrently with the, the reserve matters. Um, the proposed low density of housing was appreciated, um, so um, they had no issues on, on that front. And the development impacts on schools and healthcare provision in the area. Um, and it is uh, accepted and, and um, noted by officers that the existing primary school is at capacity. Um, and and um, bearing in mind the existing committed development in the area, there is the potential that, that school children would need to be bused to other schools in, in the area. However, the proposed GT16 allocation um, would include two new primary schools. Now, obviously, they are likely to be some distance in, in the future, but we will be looking for the early delivery of, of, of um, an initial primary school to help um, rectify that issue. So, yes, at the moment, there are capacities with is issues with, with primary schools. Uh, I expect those to be addressed in the future. Um, and unfortunately, busing children to school has been found to be 
acceptable in, in planning terms. Um, so it's, it's not considered to, to be a, 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 a grounds for refusal. So um, I think, yeah, the, the parish council comments are noted, some of which have, have been addressed, some are relevant at reserve matters stage and some um, yeah, are relevant, but don't amount to, to a, a, a refusal being warranted. Thank you very much, Charles, for your very thorough answer. I appreciate that. Thank you. That now moves us on to public speaking. We have one registered speaker speaking in support of the application this morning. Welcome, Mr. Power. I understand, Mr. Power. Um, if you're able just to introduce yourself to the committee, you will then have five minutes to address the committee and the committee officer will indicate when you have one minute remaining. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Members of the planning committee, thank you for allowing me to speak in support of this application in my capacity as a senior strategic land and planning manager at Taylor Wimpy. As has been outlined in the officer's report, the, ap the application was brought before planning committee previously and unanimously approved and is now being reconsidered due to the passage of time since and the changes in the planning policy position. We are again pleased to see the officer's recommendation to approve the application subject to conditions and a section 106 agreement. Your officers have already provided a very comprehensive report and overview of the application, which I won't repeat here, but we have worked very closely with the officers, both historically and over the past year, uh, to arrive at a scheme which is still supported. Since the application was um, first considered, um, there have been a number of updated surveys and assessments given the length of time that's passed, um, and this has included updates to acoustic and ecology work, as has been outlined previously. We are pleased to see the Environmental Management Officer's positive comments to the updated acoustic assessment, which sets out the appropriate mitigation to be used. The assessment considers three potential scenarios based on the development of the industrial estates of the south and the necessary mitigation requested in response. The scheme would provide policy compliant affordable homes through reserve matters. We would look to meet the council's demands for an appropriate mix based on those requirements. We have previously demonstrated our commitment to delivering the site, and this remains the case. We would like to continue the constructive conversations with the council and officers as we progress the more detailed aspects of the scheme and work through the reserve matters application. I hope the committee can approve this application following the previous resolution to grant and now with the site status within the emerging Greater Norwich local plan as an identified location for a development. I therefore respectfully request that members of the committee approve the application in line with your officer's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Power. Um, members, do you have any questions for the speaker? No. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So that now brings the public speaking to an end. Thank you very much for attending our planning committee this morning. We'll now discuss the application as a committee at which point we will then determine the application. So over to you members for thoughts and comments. Uh, Councillor Ward. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I think I'm putting members' minds at rest about the single access because we have here in Thorpe St Andrew uh, Avenue Green Henby Way development that was completed about 20 years ago with about 200 homes and that has one single access and there have never been any issues as far as I can see, never any queuing. So, um, now I think the officers have addressed all the other problems. Uh, with the primary school, I think rather than busing, I, I would hope the local authority would think about putting some temporary classrooms in for a few years to, to accommodate the extra children. So I'm, I'm generally happy with this development and I'd like to move the officer's recommendation. Thank you very much. We have a proposer and a seconder. Are there any other comments before we... Councillor Kelly, did you just want to comment first? Yeah, just to Taylor Wimpy, um, a lot of uh, developments around my area in Taverham, we've really got really good, adequate player provisions within it. In fact, that is one of the priorities we as councillors had set and so as a parish. I really would like to see Taylor Wimpy make an excellent job of this development if it goes through but i really want you to prove to the community that you would put adequate player provisions in because it really is important for a young community uh, going in there that there's adequate player provisions for the young children thank you thank you councillor kelly councillor karimi guvernu 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I would just like to make a point. Um, SUDs, you say they're part of the open space. I don't consider them part of the open space because the ones I've seen are very unattractive. So I hope that Taylor Wimpy will um, address that and make them into something attractive within the within the development. Mm. Um, I'm going to reiterate it again, again with play area. We did definitely need more open space for play areas for children. You're going to have young families move in there and to walk across the NDR is not sufficient. Um, single point of access again, I'm slightly concerned about that. We have that at Queen's Hill, we, we, who has an emergency entrance and it's never been used as far as I can be known in the history of it, even though there's been accidents and people have been stuck in Queen's Hill and can't get out of it. Green Lane is not particularly a wide, very wide road, um, so I have concerns there. Um, and schools, um, do you know how, how many years time they're going to build a school there? Cause you keep saying there might be a school. Um, cause busing is not, is not relevant. I don't think anymore. It's very difficult to get a, a paid bus service for children now. Thank you, Tracy. Can I you can, help us with that? Yeah, one? I can pick around. Thank you, Chairman. Um, that will obviously depend on the, the delivery rate of the scheme for the main GT16 allocation. Offices are in, con in consultation and discussion with um, the developer on that site to bring that forward. Um, so that will depend on the time frame for delivery of that. And that a primary school has been indicated in phase one of that scheme. So we are working to ensure that when that scheme comes forward, that will be one of the, the things that comes through first. Okay. But, All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, members. So if there are no further comments, I will take us to the vote. Uh, we have a proposer. Well, so um, the officer's recommendation, if I start and do this properly, the officer's recommendation is to delegate authority to approve this application subject to new objections from the natural environment uh, and team and to the conditions and a section 106 agreement. We have a proposer, a councillor Ward. We have a seconder, councillor Folger. All those in favour? All those against? One, two, three. And are there any abstentions? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That one's been carried and approved. Thank you very much. Um, at this point, I shall adjourn the meeting for a short comfort break. Um, if we can meet back here in five minutes. Thank you.
We adjourn the meeting. i uh, just check we're live streaming. Thank you very much, Leah. Uh, we're now on application two of our agenda. That's uh, 2021-1222, Haverland Hall Coach House, Haverland Hall Park, Haverland. And I'll invite our planning officer, uh, Glenn Bowman, to present this, please. Thank you, Chair. Right, we have an application here for various internal and external alterations to Haringland Hall Coach House at Haringland Hall Park. I've got one update to provide, which is uh, a representation from Councillor Bullman, who uh, wished to reiterate his support for the Parish Council's comments, which are set out in your report. Um, apart from that, no further updates to provide, but if there's one thing I'd like to emphasise before we start, that is, this is an application for listed building consent, not for planning permission. So we're looking at, is the other, other proposals uh, an appropriate alteration to the listed building? Things like change of use and the future end use would be the subject of a future planning application, which, which we don't yet have. So if I can guide you to concentrate on the listed building matters, um, that, would be, that would be great. So starting with the first slide, which uh, probably doesn't show up so great on your screen, so I'll skip straight to the second one. Uh, and this shows the coach house in its wider context. So if you see where the cursor is just here, this is the coach house, this quad-shaped building just sort of halfway across the right-hand side of the screen, uh, accessed from Haveringland, Haveringland Road on the, uh, the left-hand side to the west, with a long driveway that kind of snakes through the land all the way through, you've got a mixture of residential and holiday accommodation on Haveringland Hall Park. And then as we move to the next slide, the access to it is through the trees. So you can just about see a kind of a corridor through the trees just there. And this is how the site is accessed. We've got uh, the former kitchen garden of the now demolished Haveringland Hall to the north, a woodland belt to the west, a swimming pool building fairly modern construction just to the right hand side here and then holiday accommodation to the south and the southeast. This is the approach to the coach house from the west. It's quite an attractive archway with a turret above. Um, as we'll see, we'll go around the outside, the perimeter of the of the building to begin with. And these are the surviving original features from uh, from well, from after World War II. We'll see when we go into the courtyard that it's, uh, it's those elevations, three of those elevations, which were rebuilt in the early to mid 1990s. There's no alterations to the outside of, of the building or the outside elevations of the building. So the west elevation, the main entrance, and if we go anti-clockwise to the south, and this is holiday accommodation at the moment. This is the south and the east, so I'm in the kind of the southeast corner, just panning a bit of both of the elevations. And then I'm just going to pan to the right. So if you imagine at the clock, I'm looking at 10 o'clock here. And if I look at two o'clock, this is the swimming pool building. To the north, um, again, this is the north, the north elevation between the kitchen garden. Uh, you can see the old kitchen garden wall just on the left hand side, uh, and it's a little bit overgrown and my legs paid the price for those stinging nettles when I took the photo. Inside the courtyard, if we come through the archway just here, um, you can see that it's a, uh, a gravel surface, and as part of the application, they're proposing to raise the surface and pave it, which I suppose is a bit more uh, in keeping with its historic character as a stable block. I'm sure you wouldn't see too many horses uh, lolling around on, uh, on gravel nowadays. So the paving slabs that they're looking to put down and which we'd seek to secure by way of an appropriately worded condition will ensure that we'll, we'll get something good in there. And then I'm just panning around uh, to the left and these doors just here, they're looking to convert these into bifold doors and put some glass panel doors behind them. So that, although those doors aren't original features, they are nevertheless looking to retain them by adjusting them just, just there to turn them into a bifold and, and like I say, putting, uh, putting glass doors behind them. And then perhaps if I'm able to zoom in. Can you just see the step just there? It's almost like a brick's being turned from horizontal to, so if you imagine it's about a brick high and they're looking to uh, bring the, uh, the courtyard up to that level to provide uh, easy access for people with buggies and 
and, and in wheelchairs. And this is the drawing just confirming that. So again, if I zoom in on this, I appreciate you seeing this from a distance. So it's just an example. This is the door closed, the bifold feature there, and then the glazed doors there into the cafe if we get the planning application for it. Moving on to the next slide. This is just really showing that there's no alterations being made to the other elevations. So this is the eastern range, which is that one just there. So if you count the windows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hopefully there's going to be seven on the photo as well. Yeah, so it's all much, it's all much the same as it as it was. And then you can see also that this is the more modern construction if you compare it with the picture of the south elevation. So you can see this is old, this is retained from the 1840s and managed to survive the war. Whereas this is noticeably newer. And then I managed to gain access to this property here to take a photo of the inside, which we'll come on to in a sec, um, just showing the partition walls. Um, I'm zooming on this one because this shows the existing layout and what's to be, what's to be removed. So the red areas are all these partition walls which are going to be removed. And the photo that I took, I came into this building and I just took it looking down the corridor there and as you tap them there, it's blindingly obvious they're partition walls. The other units were occupied so I wasn't able to gain access to them. So they're looking to open out large parts of the buildings uh, to something that you could argue would resemble the historic, more open character of the stables just around here. So certainly more open spaces in these, in these areas here. So taking account of all of those factors, my view is that this represents an appropriate alteration to the listed building. And the recommendation is to grant listed building consent. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Glenn, for presenting that to us. Um, members, do you have any questions to Glenn? Councillor Kelly. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good morning, Glenn. Um, you talk about the bifold doors, etc. I think looking at it personally, that it sits at present, it's really a very appealing feature for the courtyard, as you probably agree. Do I take it that the, back, the, the doors, the glass doors are going to be so that the, old, the present door is going to be removed and it will be just glass on the half side? The doors, uh, the doors will be retained and they will open and the glass doors will be behind them. Behind it. Correct. Okay, that's yep. fine. I think that's a lovely feature of the courtyard. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Councillor Karimu Gouvenlou. Um, the glass doors again, are they going to be automatic or are they just push doors? I believe they're going to be push doors. Can we ask for automatics? Because you talked about access for buggies and wheelchairs. That would have been quite nice to have automatic doors. Let's see. If we zoom in, I think it, there is often a balance to be had when dealing with a listed building. And I think if we look at if we look at the space that's available, I think it's very unlikely they'll be automatic. Um, and I, I suppose now is not really what a chance. I mean, just put a thing at the top and say automatic. It, it's still open up the same way. The bottom line is I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether okay. they're automatic. But I, my feeling is, because of the constraints of the site, I think there will be manual doors. But it's certainly something I can clarify before I issue the decision. I'm just thinking about access accessibility of sure. people. Thank you. Thank you very much for that point. And uh, yeah, if, if we're able to follow that up, that would be useful. Thank you. Any other questions to Glenn? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, as um, we, we have no public speakers registered for this particular application, although as um, our area plan planning manager, I'll call you by your right title this time, Glenn, sorry, indicated Councillor Bullman, um, the local district councillor for this area, has emailed in. Um, 
He has said that he fully endorses the comments made by the chairman of the parish council to reject the application concerning this application. If I re may refer you to the representations made by the parish council, they're on page 71 of our papers today. Um, do you want me to read those out? Or... No, okay, well, um, as I said, they're before you on page 71 of your agenda. Councillor Ward. Thank you. Uh, I understand that the, the, the main objection of the parish council is that it's going to be turned into a cafe, which is, which is not something that we're considering at this meeting anyway. So I think their comments are largely irrelevant. Thank you very much, Councillor Ward. As, you, as you've heard today, uh, what we're um, presiding over is a listed build con building consent, not a plan and application for the use of that building. So we need to focus on this as a list listed building consent application. Thank you. Okay, if there are no further comments. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't see you. Councillor Folger. Yeah. yeah I think the, uh, the, the officer has explained extremely well um, what the impact of the yeah. uh, changes are and uh, assuming that <coughs> they do conform with the legislation as far as concerned. I don't see that there's uh, a problem as far as proceeding uh, uh, with the other alterations uh, as indicated. So uh, given that there are no other Objections. Um, I'd like to move the officer to make objections. I second that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Folger. So, um, the recommendation before us today is to approve this app, um, Mr. Bill consent application subject conditions, um, as and they are stated on page 73 of our papers today. Uh, as we've heard, we have a proposer and a seconder. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? Abstention. Thank you very much. So that has been carried. Um, that has been approved, which now takes us to application number three. That starts on page 74 of our agenda today, and that is application 212, sorry, 20211331, Broadland County Country Park in Felthorpe. Again, I'll invite uh, Glenn to present this one to us, please. Thank you, Chair. Application to resurface the existing footpath at Broadland Country Park and to implement various di biodiversity enhancements at the same time. Uh, the key considerations for this one are the principle of development, the impact on the surrounding area, trees and biodiversity. So this shows the extent of the rural and country park as a whole and land that is owned by this council, which is why the application is before you today, because the council is the applicant. If we move swiftly on to the second one, this shows the site in its wider context. So we've got the A140 is coming round, north to south. We've got the Broadland Northway in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, Horsford to the southeast, Valthorpe to the northwest. Uh, and I suppose if I was to link it to the previous application, Haveringland Hall is somewhere off the top of your screen up here. In closer quarters, this is the uh, the red line is, is the rough route of the uh, of the pink route, which is the shorter of the two routes that you can walk around within the park. We've got the car park in the southeast corner just here. And then hot off the information board within the car park, the pink route is a triangular route with a shared access route to the purple route. And then you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise, whatever takes your fancy. Uh, in my report, I mentioned that the site um, and routes around the country park link into other routes um, in and around the area. So these pink lines are all restricted byways that, that you can walk along or take your horse on. Uh, it connects to Felthorpe again to the northwest um, and it's not too far from, uh, from Horsford as well, certainly within walking distance. And then we've got the routes along the Broadland Northway 
and down through to Taverham and Drayton, just off the bottom of the screen just here. Looking at the site itself, the path is going to be generally two and a half metres in width, two metres in width where there are pinch points, say between trees, and then 2.8 metres in width from the car park for the emergency access along here. This just gives an indication of how the path is going to be constructed. Um, as I said in the report, it's, uh, it's going to be a, a bit of surface scrape um, with granite fines on top. So it's kind of going to have that dark, uh, darker look to it. And then where there are tree stumps uh, in the way, they're going to be ground out. And where there are tree roots, which we'll see in some of the photos, uh, there'll be no scraping, but a layer of sand will be laid over them to allow water to percolate through the surface. Um, so that the future health and vitality of the trees that those roots serve can be can be preserved. So I should just say that's a root, not an M. Uh, from the from the car park, then park up on the left. The gate is just off. There's a pedestrian gate just off the picture on the right hand side, uh, and then we're walking to the pink route along the emergency access route. By coincidence, and for convenience for this photo, uh, a maintenance vehicle is travelling along it. So we can see that the pathway is capable of taking a vehicle. Um, we're going to go in an anti-clockwise route, the greatest hits of the Broad and Country Park, and we can see that there's some tree root... Let's have a zoom in. Yeah, there's some tree root. So you can see a root just there, and there's plenty of those along along the pink route and then there's a tree stump just in so this is an example of one of the tree roots that's uh, sorry tree stumps that's going to be ground out um, in terms of vegetation to be removed no trees are going to be removed but where they overhang uh, some branches will be cut back uh, there are ferns which need to be uh, and shrubs excuse me which will need to be removed to facilitate the works so if I just show you some of the uh, some of the pathways so this is uh, the bit that's alongside Haveringland Road so in the northeast far northeast corner it's more or less runs parallel with the road and if we just then it kind of widens out there to the point at which you can barely distinguish the path so and then it narrows down again a bit in the northeast corner uh, this is on the return along the northwest boundary you see the ferns overhanging there and then it's the far western section of the southern section, far western end of the southern section. So it's pretty much a straight line all the way back to the car park. You can see it's a lot more well defined here. Uh, and the pond is about halfway along uh, that southern stretch. It's a seasonal pond. I took this photo last week. It didn't have any water in it. Given the last 48 hours, it may have a bit more in it now. But the idea is to extend this pond in a horseshoe shape around this holly tree just here and it'll be roughly 10 metres by 10 metres with the pond being desilted as well. Um, it, from speaking to the ranger who was on site when I did my visit, the pond seems to, be, seems to have arisen as, as a result of a tree falling over. So if you like, it's the pits of the, uh, of the roots of the trees. And this is from the pond leading back to, uh, to that emergency route. Again, you can see that it's fairly wide and fairly well defined. And then I'm walking back to the car park just here. In terms of some of the ecological mitigation measures that are being imposed, we're looking at um, uh, making sure that there's no backfilling of trenches, so no reptiles get stuck in there should they chance upon it. Um, materials being stored above ground, uh, making sure we're out of the nesting season now anyway, but if work did take place in the nesting season, just making sure that there's no, no birds um, in the vegetation and having, if anything, is encountered that may be of ecological interest, um, stopping works immediately and getting an ecologist on site to check things out. You also note in the report that I said, although enhancements are being proposed, I don't necessarily need, I don't necessarily consider that these are necessary to make the development acceptable. So would we, would my recommendation be to approve or refuse planning permission regardless of, of the ecological, ecological enhancements? While welcome, I don't necessarily think that sticking a bird box or an owl box on a tree is directly related to these works, which is why I've arrived at the view that I have. Uh, and overall, Chair, it's an acceptable form of development, hence my recommendation for approval. 
Thank you very much for your presentation this morning, Glenn. Uh, any questions for the officer? Councillor Ward, followed by Councillor Kelly. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, I do know the area. I've been up there a couple of times. Uh, I think that's a, a very, very good improvement so that push chairs and wheelchairs will be able to get round because that path is really narrow in places. Uh, and there won't be the need for signage on that particular path once it's done. But the, the, the longer route, I went up there with my dog and got completely lost in the woods and ended up coming out on the road somewhere and had to walk a great distance to get back. So I think unless it has been done already, the longer route does need more signage. Thank you. Joe, if I may respond to that. Uh, I agree because the same happened to me when I took my children there. Um, but my, my understanding is that it, it, that is one of the list of projects that will uh, is in the pipeline to, to improve signage around, around the country park. Thank you very much. I'll also report back about the, the signage to make sure we, we do something about that. Um, Councillor Kelly. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I have to say, uh, the enhancements of this, Glenn, I think is really timely and appropriate. Uh, like the rest of the councillors, I use it quite often for my grandchildren who live at Horsford and we walk the way, especially difficulties with there for people in wheelchairs. I think this, it's long overdue that we really took this and allowed access to all members of the public. And wheelchair access is absolutely vital, I think, to be, um, you know, be usable for these individuals. Um, the parish and the county councillor, uh, Stuart Clancy, as liaised with um, Norfolk County Council for the east end of where great congregations of cars are there, and especially uh, in the winter, there's huge puddles and it's muddy and it's terrible, and the other end of where you as well. So winter access is really very difficult, and I heartily uh, recommend this uh, improvement to this site. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Kelly. Councillor Karimi Gouvernou, followed by Councillor Leggett. I'd just like to say I agree with Ken. Anything that stops my grandson's wheelchair getting muddy, because he does use that route, would be most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Leggett. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I think it is great uh, progress and to everybody's uh, future <clears throat> well well being. Uh, yes, signage is very important because <clears throat> I, like you others, have got lost and came out on the same road as uh, Councillor Ward. <clears throat> I would be very pleased to um, I forget, has it been approved? But I would be very happy to approve this, uh, the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Leggett. Councillor Beadle. Thank you, Chair. Just back to the list, I, I use this as well. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the county council section is far away. <coughs> I couldn't say, but it's the county council section is far away. And that does need attention. Uh, and uh, last time I was going down there, I didn't notice that there was a sign up saying, beware of the bull. And I thought, yeah, right. Uh, and uh, got around the corner and there was his the bull with this little harem of ladies. Uh, and I thought, okay. So, uh, yeah. <coughs> it's a novel to have it actually in a, an amenity area of the council. But, uh, I'm not complaining. Thank you very much, Councillor Beadle. Um, I'd, I'd concur with the comments already made. The purpose of this country park is to promote health and well-being for our residents, and to have these pathways installed would make that accessible for more people. And I'd wholeheartedly welcome that. Um, we have a proposer from Ken Leggett. I'd be happy to second that from the chair, if that's okay. All those in favour of the officer's recommendation that is to approve this application subject to conditions. Thank you very much, members. Thank you very much. That takes us to the end of our um, planning applications and on to item, and I'll just thank Glenn for presenting that before I swiftly move on to item six, and that is the plan and appeals for the period 30th of June 2021 to the 9th of September 2021. They're set out on page 81 of our agenda. I'm just going to invite Tracy to present this item. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, 
really just to for, for members to note the outcome of those appeal decisions. Um, as previously referenced, um, officers are um, reviewing a number of those appeal decisions to understand whether or not there's a change direction of pins um, to really to dissect those and that will be reported to you for, for discussion um, at a later date. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so that now completes the business of the planning committee this morning and brings our meeting to a close. I formally close the meeting at 11.01.